Paul works 45 minutes away from home. He gets up at the same time, eats the same breakfast, leaves for work at exactly 6.30, takes the same route, and follows the same cars. At times he gets to work and wonders how he got there. He did not consciously recall making any turns, stopping at any lights, or yielding for any pedestrians. As we establish routines, we can start to function without thinking. We become comfortable since things run smoothly, and hey, let's face it, why mess with a good thing? We may even find this same comfort flowing into our workday. It's good when things are good, but what happens when things change? On your way to work, you run into an unexpected detour that puts a wrinkle into what started off as an otherwise routine day. We are now faced to think a little differently without any choice. How do we react when we get caught off guard? Well, we begin to fight for position on the road with others who are too experiencing the surprise and being forced to react. Drivers with differing levels of patience, skill, and attitude begin to intertwine. One person's reaction can affect yours, just as your reaction can affect theirs. We're all late, we're all irritated, and none of us had a choice in the matter. If the city would have announced the closure ahead of time, this entire situation could have been avoided. We could have planned a little and weighed all the pros and cons of an alternate route. Because of this planning, we found a route to cut 5 minutes off our commute. That's 10 minutes per day, or over 40 extra hours per year we now get to spend with our children. With the right leadership in place, change can often be a blessing and an opportunity to see things a little differently, and to discover new opportunities. Change is an ongoing thing and a reality for any company looking to survive in today's world. For the next few minutes, we're going to explore what it is that makes change so difficult for some, and what we can do as leaders to help foster a culture of change in our workplaces. Let's start our journey by reviewing an article on the employee's attitude towards organizational change. This article was a comprehensive analysis of the different kinds of attitudes that employees have in the face of organizational change. The attitudes were organized into four specific ideas. Employees' readiness for change, employees' commitment to change, employees' openness to change, and employees' cynicism about organizational change. Interestingly, at least two-thirds of organizational change initiatives fail, not because of the initiative itself, but because of poor implementation of the change strategy. It turns out that the biggest mistake a leader can make is to undervalue the roles of employees during times of change. The only way for successful change implementation to be accomplished organizationally is to be sure employees are willing to change their own behaviors in support of the vision. The first employee attitude the article covers is readiness to change. Readiness to change boils down to an individual's personal attitude about the belief that they need to change and whether or not they feel they are able to achieve it. On a personal level, they factor in their perception of their own competence to make the change, their job satisfaction, and their thoughts on the organization's commitment to the change. Organizationally, employees factor in the trust of peers and leaders, as well as a belief in the ability for the organization to actually be successful. A combination of these factors adds up to an employee's level of readiness for change. Usually when we think of an employee's commitment, we think of the strength of their link to the organization. The second employee attitude towards change, the commitment to change, is distinctly different. It's a mindset that brings an individual to take the necessary action to achieve the successful implementation of a change initiative. There are three types of commitment to change. Effective commitment is where there is a desire to provide support for a change initiative based on the beliefs of its benefits. Normative commitment is a sense of obligation to provide support for a change initiative. Continuance commitment is support because of the recognition of costs personal and organizational, associated with the failure to support the change. Openness to change was defined as a willingness to accommodate and accept change. It was found that the clearer an employee is in their role with the company, and the earlier an employee was informed and included in the change, the more likely they will be to op be open to it. Simply throwing information at employees will not make them more open to change. They will react to the quality of the information being shared. It seems trust in leaders is one of the bigger factors in an employee's openness to change. I think that this is a tribute to the feeling of comfort in bringing employees and their insights in as part of the solution and not making them feel they are part of the problem. Defined as a judgment that stems from an individual's employment experience, cynicism to change is, in my opinion, one of the things that we as leaders really need to try to avoid. A history of repeated failures will not do much to build confidence when selling the idea to try something new. Employees who experience multiple failed change initiatives reduce their commitment to the organizations and turn change initiatives into self-fulfilling prophecies of failure. As this cycle continues, each change initiative becomes less and less likely to succeed. 
With less and less success, motivation and productivity may drop. Feelings of distrust and unfairness thrive because of perceived organizational insincerity, incompetence, and repeatedly failing to meet expectations. Some of the best ways to avoid cynicism to change is to establish a positive track record of change implementation while involving employees in decision making and sharing information prior to and throughout the process. With a better understanding of attitudes leading up to and during a time of change from an employee's perspective, let's take a different angle and take a look at that from an organization. The article Nine Common Blunders and How to Avoid Them When Managing Change outlines nine mistakes we make as leaders while implementing change and strategies to help avoid them. The first blunder is accepting lackluster leadership. Leadership is not about being liked, and it's not about one person. True change requires leadership from all levels, including self-leadership of employees themselves. Failing to make tough decisions early and decisively to help appease concerns can actually backfire and give the illusion of a lack of commitment to the change on your part. Even worse, it can make you settle for a lesser amount of change than was needed. To help sell the credibility of the change initiative, be realistic about expectations and equally clear on the potential risks and rewards. The second blunder is setting fire to a perfectly good platform. Not all change environments are created equally, and overstating the urgency of a change initiative can negatively impact an employee's cynicism to a future organizational change. Taking a moment to realistically identify the type of change needed will not only allow a true view of change needs and also put together an organization resource to work in the right areas. The third blunder is treating change management as a separate work stream. Change management must be integrated into all aspects of the project. Chances are, the change you make will unintentionally affect other areas and employees in the organization. Change must accommodate how the different areas of the organization intersect. The fourth blunder is failing to align the organization to support the change. Organizationally, the technological, organizational, and process areas of an organization are all intertwined, and you can't change one without affecting the other. Take an organizational view when implementing change and develop a plan to minimize negative unintended consequences. The fifth blunder is tolerating weak project management. Changing isn't about planning, it's about successfully implementing the change to achieve a clear organizational goal. Defining processes, developing metrics, and evaluating performance are key in making sure that things move, are moving forward as desired. Allow enough time for feedback and debate to avoid rushing into the first area without giving your employees enough time to give their valuable insight. The sixth blunder is tolerating soft deadlines and weak metrics. Because of the unknowns when leading change, many people avoid setting hard deadlines. Without these deadlines, change initiatives will most likely drag on and there will be no end. Set transparent metrics that add accountability through consequences and reward throughout the change process. The seventh blunder is creating a convoluted plot. Employees want and expect clear communication during a change initiative. Some leaders are often working under the misguided mindset of, you can't over-communicate. A message that is off-point or not targeted to the right group may create more questions than answers. The article states that you need to provide the right people with the right information at the right time so that they are able to make informed decisions. The eighth blunder is a failure to buy a warranty. Even with clear deadlines and a plan for success, once a change initiative is implemented, the work is not done. The effects of the change will continue to last longer than the implementation plan defines. Continually speaking of the change and the benefits as they happen will help to form the corporate culture you seek. As a leader, model the behavior you wish to see and help to build the confidence and respect of your employees. The ninth blunder is letting culture hold you hostage. Culture is the biggest obstacle most leaders face. Corporate, regional, and change cultures all impact how successful change initiatives can be. Without a good reason of why to change, and not staying on point with corporate strategy, any change will simply be lost energy. People do not naturally resist the idea of change. Only the change that they feel will affect them negatively. The last article, Effective Change Management, The Simple Truth, is a great summary of what it takes to implement successful change. Effective change management can be broken into seven areas, of which we can see both the employee attitudes towards change and management blunders to avoid take shape. They are Leading Set a clear vision and purpose for the change. Instill confidence in the change and clearly state the goals and objectives, creating a sense of community and a feeling of we're in this together. Communicating 
communicate the rationale of the change, and help your employees make sense of it from their own personal perspectives. Learning. Set your employees up for success by giving them the knowledge, tools, and skills to help implement and adapt to the change initiative. Measuring. Use metrics to help strive for and track progress towards continuous improvement. With clear goals set in the beginning, you can use these measurements to track success and to take any corrective actions as the change initiatives unfold. Involving. Get input from those affected most. Get them vested with a sense of involvement, making the change initiative easier to implement with less employee resistance. Sustaining. A change initiative is never done. Continue to show your support for change and to give your organization credibility by highlighting the shared success. Having the successful track record will make the next initiative even easier and help to foster a culture of change.